Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Quote, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Father, grant your presence and the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and minds that we may look more fully into your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Uh, this morning, I'd like to spend a few moments talking about a Christmas promise. A Christmas promise that had its beginnings in the book of Genesis, after sin and death had entered into this world through the deception of Satan. And at that time, God spoke and he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is what is called pre-evangelism. It's the very first foretelling of the gospel message. This theme is carried through Noah, God's covenant with Noah, uh, in that he provides an ark through which his family is saved, a type of baptism. They were delivered from sin and sinfulness through the waters of baptism in the form of the ark. And then Abraham was given the promise as someone who was considered righteous because of his faith that from him would come a generation and a redeemer. And that theme is carried forward in Moses who was given the law and then given directions and instructions for building the ark. And the ark being that place where the Lord revealed and manifested himself on earth in his glory. And carrying that forward as Paul notes in Romans to the prophets. And the significance of the prophetic message and the example that I would use from Isaiah, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which we need to take just a moment and clarify why is he called Emmanuel, but they gave him the name Jesus. When the prophet is looking at Emmanuel, it's a descriptor. We will call him Emmanuel, that is God with us. He is God with us. Uh, Shauna is here somewhere this morning. I saw her, unless she's uh, taking care of the children. You know, we could say of uh, Shauna Grugan, she is an artist. We could call her an artist. 
because that's what she does beautifully. But her name is Sean. And so it's, you need a little clarification there. The prophet said you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It is a descriptor of who Jesus is. But the instruction comes from the angel, specifically, that you're to give him the name Jesus. So he is both called Emmanuel and his name is Jesus. The talk of uh, why I'm referencing the scriptures and trying to paint this big picture of uh, the message of salvation coming through the ages is because scripture is central to our formation as followers of Jesus. It is fundamental to our formation as Christians. And it is our home. It's our story. It's God's story. It, it, it's our home. We live there. And we breathe the air of Scripture to be informed and to understand the great story of God and His saving power. And at this time of year, it's important that we recognize the credibility and the veracity of Scripture. That is why we should have confidence in Scripture. Why do I do that? I trust that at this Christmas season, we'll kick it up another notch and say, Lord, you have revealed in your word that which is important for us to understand. Give us eyes to see and hearts to comprehend what you have written in your word. And I'll give you an example of why that is important. We read it in the gospel. God's initiative often results in divine interruption. Take, for instance, Mary. She was not planning on having a child before she was married. But there was a visitation that she experienced from an angel called Gabriel, chief amongst angels, as I understand it. And she assures her that she does not need to be afraid that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would conceive a child. It was a sacred time in which Mary's life was interrupted. Take Joseph, who upon finding that his wife is pregnant, being a righteous man, and not wanting to expose her to public humility, he decided that he would divorce her quietly. But during the night, he has a dream and he has a visitation from what? Or who? An angel. Now it doesn't say his name is Gabriel, but I kind of suspect that it was the same angel that visited Mary, but we don't have a record of that. He has this angelic visitation in which he's exhorted After he considers this, that is, the divorce, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus. So Joseph's life is interrupted, a divine interruption. An angel appears to him in a dream and gives him instruction and tells him what is about to happen and that they will call the child Jesus. And then on the occasion of Jesus' birth, the shepherds out on the hillside have a visitation from, guess what? An angel. And this angelic messenger 
tells these shepherds about what is about to happen, and he's joined by this host of, of what is called a heavenly host, and they're singing glory to God. And the verses that follow says, and when the angels, plural, return to heaven. Angels were very active around the conception and the birth of Jesus. We don't know how much we deal with angels, do we? That's what's important why we understand the credibility and the veracity of this scriptural account so we can embrace a view that's bigger than our earth and world in which we live. On the occasion of Jesus' ascension, we read in the book of Acts, chapter 1, that as they were watching Jesus ascend into heaven, Their mouths are hanging open. They're standing in awe, as I would be. Jesus is taken up and hidden from their sight by the clouds. He has two people in white. It doesn't say they're angels, but guess what? I, I believe they were angelic messengers who were telling them the same way you've seen him go, he's going to come back. So angels are an active part of what God uses to bring about his purposes in the earth. Hebrews chapter 1 talks about the angels as ministering spirits sent to minister in behalf of his elect. Enough said about angels. What it is important to say is how Mary responded with an angelic visitation. She said, Get unto me as you have spoken. She surrendered to God's word to her through the angelic messenger. Joseph, upon having an angelic visitation, what does he do? He receives this divine interruption and does what the angel tells him to do and paves the way for the fulfillment of scripture and the birth of the Christ child. Key to Mary, to Joseph, and to all who are interrupted by God's intervention and initiative is surrendering our hearts. Surrendered hearts pave the way for revelation. As we enter into this Christmas season, I pray that we will open our hearts, that we will surrender our hearts Charles Dickens, probably best known for a Christmas story called A Christmas Carol. Charles Dickens made this comment about Christmas. And he inspired readers to think of Christmas as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely. It's a special time of the year to open our hearts to have confidence in the biblical report. And yes, even say, Lord, I'm not, I'm not seeing angels, but I see it in your word. Send your angelic messengers on our behalf, on behalf of the Abbey, and do your work. 
I invite you to open wide your hearts. Invite him in. Receive his initiative for you. Embrace his interruption. Pause for just one few seconds. Are you willing to embrace his interruption in your life for his purpose? I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> There's a lot of amens in the Anglican liturgy, and so it's okay once in a while if you slip one in for me. Are you willing to embrace his divine interruption for your life and in your life for the fulfillment of his purpose? Amen. Thank you. <coughs> The surrendering of your heart will open the door for amazing things. Amazing things. Surrendered hearts pave the way for revelation may come. Please stand with me as we confess with the saints over the ages through the Nicene Creed, which emphasizes the very things of which we have spoken. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the peace of the Lord. Good morning as we uh, move into the, the, the thing we call the offertory. Uh, we're moving into the 20s, the first century. Yeah, we have different ways to give online and text and all that kind of stuff. So if that's how you love doing it, do it. Someone and people keep asking us if we'll move into the modern world so we have. So now we're live streaming, we can text again. But honestly, um, as we move forward, if you are new here or you're a guest here, this service is a gift to you. Please, when the offertory plate comes around, don't put anything in it unless you just want to put a connect card and tell us who you are and we'll uh, connect with you and move in that direction. But if this is your church home, one of the things that happens every December is we're, we can barely meet our budget and then 
December comes and people give generously and we meet our budget. So that's our expectation as we move forward. And next year, what's happening is we're, we're going to be growing. We're adding uh, an assistant. We're moving forward in different ways. And so all of that money will be stewarded well. So let's walk in love as Christ loved us and he gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice the Lord.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing that at all times and all places we give thanks to you, Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in Him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power, in great triumph, to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his coming again. Therefore we praise you as we join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is, was, and shall evermore be sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God, and they're for you. You are the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts with faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. We pray you've been edified by this presentation. You have been listening to the teaching ministry of the Abbey at Polly's Island, South Carolina. For more information on the Abbey at Polly's Island Church or for more audio, please visit our website at theabbeypollysisland.com.